and the marks of nail in the palms of his hands before we could believe. And that was why our Lord said to Apostle Thomas in John 20, 29, because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Amen. The chief priests and the Pharisees, instead of repenting that they had mistakenly killed the Messiah and asked for forgiveness, they surrendered themselves to Satan's deceptive ways to cover up their wickedness and collude with Satan. In his final attempt to rob Jesus of the victory and glory of resurrection, as the Bible tells us in Matthew 28, 11 to 15. While they were going, some of the guards went into the city and told everything that had happened. After the priest has assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers telling them, you must say, his disciple came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed. And this story is still being told among the Jews to this day. Can you believe this fabrication of lies? Has Satan and all his collaborators not been put to shame? Has Jesus not triumphed over death? For a long time we have been singing an inspirational gospel church music in this church, confirming our faith and believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which I will just read out. My soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit praise his name. For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus, you are Lord. For death could not hold you captive. Even in the grave, Jesus, you are Lord. When the soldiers took him, they brought him to Pontius Pilate and Pilate asked the crowd, What shall I do with this man? The crowd screamed, Crucify him. The crowd screamed, Crucify him. On the cross of Calvary, my Jesus was nailed and he died. But on the third day, but on the third day he rose again. For death could not hold him captive. Even in the grave, Jesus, you are Lord. For death could not hold him captive. Yes. Even in the grave, Jesus is Lord. Yes. Yes. When Jesus rose from the dead, he rose with his physical body. Yeah. And he was physically seen, as the Bible confirmed, when he had Thomas called Didymus. Reach here with your finger and see my hands. And reach here with your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Amen. And Thomas answered and said, in verse 28, My Lord and my God, if it were his spirit body, which we sometimes refer to as ghost or apparition, it not have physical form. Jesus went further to prove that he has been physically resurrected when he appeared before his disciples and broke bread. As we read in John, 21, 9 to 14. Jesus appeared to his disciples and seeing that they had not caught any fish all night, he revealed himself by asking them to cast their net into the same river and they obeyed just to please him and prove him wrong. To their amazement, their net was bustling with lots of fishes that suddenly opened the eyes of Peter and he knelt down before Jesus. The Bible said that when they had gone ashore, they saw a shackle fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore filled of larger fishes, a hundred fifty-three of them. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came 
and took the bread and gave it to them. And did the same with the fish. This was now the third day that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. My fellow Christian believers, can a ghost perform all these activities? Certainly not. And that is why we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the foundation of our faith that we call Easter. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus once again is opening our eyes to this misery and the concept of creation and immortality. When God joined the body of Adam, which is the dust, and the spirit, which is the breath of God, together, Adam was not a living human being until he, that is the both material, which is the physical, and the immaterial, which is the spiritual components, come together. Are you following me? Yes. Yes. Hence, the essence of humanity is not just spirit, but spirit joined with body. Your body does not merely house your soul or spirit, but it is much of a part of who you are and also in the spirit. When God created mankind, God wanted us to have companionship with Him, Amen. to live with Him in eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that was why yes. He said in Genesis 1 26 to 31, then God said, Let us make mankind in our own image, Amen. according to our own likeness, mm -hmm. and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Oh, yeah. Verse 27. So God created humankind. In his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Now, death is an abnormal condition because it tears apart what God has created and joined together. God intended for our bodies to last as long as our souls. Amen. The Bible sees it as unnatural and undesirable. We are unified beings. And that is why the bodily resurrection of the dead is so vital to us. Amen. And that's why Job rejoiced when in his flesh he will see God, as we also read in Job 19.26. When God sent Jesus to die, it was for our bodies as well as our spirits to resurrect. Yes. He came to redeem not just the breath of life, which is the spirit, but also the dust of the ground, that is the body. Amen. When we die, it is not that our real self goes into the intermediate heaven and our fake self, which is the body, goes to the grave. It's that part of us that goes to the grave that awaits our bodily resurrection. We will never be all that God wanted us to be until that body and the spirit are again joined in resurrection. Amen. When the new world comes at the second coming of Jesus Christ, God is not going to create a new set of human race it will still be the continuation of the present existence of humankind, but of the righteous people. Amen. Amen. God the Creator had the capacity to renew the same humanity, the same world, and the same heaven, and the same earth that have been corrupted and polluted by sin. Just as anyone in Christ is a new creation in whom the old has passed away, Amen. and everything has become new. As we read in 2 Corinthians 5 7, the new earth will still be earth, but a changed heart. It will be converted and resurrected, but it will still be the earth and recognizable as such. Just as those reborn through salvation maintain continuity with the people they were, so too the world will be reborn in continuity with the old world. Matthew 19 28. It is then. That the kingdom of God will be fully realized when it is visibly extended over the earth. This confirmation of human existence is what the Bible means in 1 Corinthians 15:53. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with the immortality. It is this perishable which is a mortal, which puts on that imperishable and immortal. Likewise, it is we, the very same people. Who walk this earth? Who will walk the new earth? And so, we will be with the Lord forever. As we read also in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, for God said in Matthew 22, 32, that he is not the God of the dead, but God of the living. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. For revelations like this, it grieves my heart that there will be many questions going on in our hearts, which because of our lethargic attitude to investigating facts, or lack of interest in our future life, since we are more concerned about the problems of our present existence, with which we are so much consumed. For me, I often wonder how many people we really cherish the idea of returning in the same present body in the new world. I don't think you understand that question. I often wonder how many people will really cherish the idea of returning in the same present body in the new world. I have had many telling me that they will have to come back a tall, lanky, and handsome man. <laughs> One son would like to be like Cinderella. <laughs> but no one ever told me, I don't care how I look. We all want to come back looking good and beautiful. I am sure those with liabilities such as blindness, deaf and dumb, the cripple, and the dwarf will surely not want to come back looking like that again. And what about all those Christian saints that were burnt alive by all the agents of Satan? The Antichrist Christ spread all over the world? Or those thrown into the lion den where they have flesh and bones where are meat for wild beasts and crocodiles? What will happen to such bodies? The Bible, which is the word of God, has reassured us that our Creator will never leave us in complete darkness. Not only do we know what our present bodies are like, we also have an example in the scriptures what a resurrected body is likely to be. We are told a great deal about Christ's resurrected body. And we were told that our bodies will just be like His. Our Lord Jesus will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like His glorious body. Amen. As confirmed in Philippians 3, 20-21. Beloved, we are God's children now. It is beyond our guest to know when Christ is coming back and how we shall all look like it. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Amen. For we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. As confirmed in John 3, 2. Hallelujah. Just as we are born the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if this be the ultimate end of all man everlasting life of peace and happiness in Christ Jesus. For those who believe in him and have been saved, what else do you think should be more important to us in this world than this salvation which Christ Jesus is offering us? This is the message of Easter. Amen. Apostle Paul taught us in 1 Corinthians 6, 14 to 20. It reads, and God, raised the, and God raised the Lord, and we also raised us by His power. Amen. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Amen. Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Mm. Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? Mm. For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Sean fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside his body. But the fornicator sins against his own body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Amen. Which you have from God. And that you are not your own. For you are bought with a price. Amen. Therefore, Glorify God in your body. Amen. Fellow brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. this is the price that Jesus, the Son of God, and Messiah paid on that cross for us. 